minister preached in a certain place and after the service he on his way out of the church saw a little boy standing beside the door of the church he asked the young man how did you like my message the young man said just a small boy about five or six years old said number one you preach too long Number two, you preach too loud. Number three, you didn't say nothing. Well, I hope before we are through tonight, I won't preach too long and I won't preach too loud. And I hope that I will have said something. Bishop Ellis and all the ecumenical guests who are here on this night. We read from the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 5. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity, 38 years. Let me pause to recognize the first jurisdiction of Southern California. Southern California, can I please see you? If you would just stand, Southern Cal, first. Just kind of wave, Southern Cal. God bless you. Thank you. I, I, I do want to go back home. Now, a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition for a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? That's the subject for tonight. Will you ask your neighbor, do you want to be made well? And would you just lift your hand and say, Lord, I do want to be made well. Seems so strange. Seems so unusual, so out of order. That Jesus would ask a man who was sick whether he wanted to be made well or not. Man had been infirm for 38 years. He'd been waiting at the place of healing, Bishop McKinney, for a long time. Yet Jesus, before he would do anything else, Pause to ask the man before we do anything do you want to be made well if you or I had been there on that day we probably would have butted in we probably would have interrupted Jesus and said Jesus what kind of question is that of course the man wants to be made well. Why else would he be here? Why else would he be waiting at the place of healing? But let me say to you tonight, it was important that Jesus asked that question. Because there are many people who prefer to be sick. I said there are many people who prefer to be sick. Some people feel that sickness or being ill accomplishes more for them than health and being well. We entered a service at my church. The lady walked by me wearing a neck brace. 
she explained that she'd been injured in an automobile accident. I said, well, come here and let me pray for you. She said, no, no, no. Don't pray for me yet. I got a lawsuit in. When I get the money from my lawsuit, I'll be back. You can pray for me. She did not want to be well at that moment. There are others who are in that category because if they got well, they would lose their disability assistance. Somebody in here is at the convocation on disability. I was playing golf with a man and he was beating me all over the place. I said, man, how do you have time to be on this golf course and play golf so well? He said, I'm on disability. So these individuals would be disappointed if they recovered to the degree that they would lose their support. There are other people who don't want to be well because they don't want to bear the responsibility that is placed on well people. They don't want to have to perform at the level at which well people are expected to perform. Well, people have to show up for work. Well, people have to show up for work on time. Well, people are supposed to perform their work at an acceptable quality level. And so sickness can be a good excuse for not doing these things. Therefore, many people would rather be sick. They won't, don't want to be held accountable. They don't want to be judged like a normal person. But then there are some people who don't want to be well because they don't want to give up whatever it is they would have to give up to avoid sickness. Therefore, they would rather be sick. They choose a lifestyle or a pattern of behavior, behavior that can lead to sickness. Indiscriminate sexual promiscuity. Homosexual. Bisexual. On the down low. Trisexual. Oh, you didn't know what trisexual was? That's that crowd that will try anything with anybody. Uh -huh. The AIDS pandemic, the spread of various kinds of STDs are expressions of the preference of many people to sacrifice their health and the health of others on the altar of pleasure and gratification. Sexuality is a marvelous gift from God. But sexuality uncontrolled and ungoverned is a destructive monster. Sexual behavior must be subject to the word of God and to the spirit of God if it's to make its highest contribution to the well-being of humanity. So the list of things that people do to destroy good health is endless. Substance abuse, alcohol abuse, improper diet, lack of exercise, reckless driving, reckless behavior, smoking are just some of the ways that people say, I don't want to be well. I'd rather be sick. It's important that we understand that good health is prerequisite to almost everything else that we pursue 
on the earth. Sickness at its worst leads to death. And to fail to make every effort to attain and maintain health will sooner or later diminish the quality of life and make one a liability rather than an asset. But let me also take a moment to talk about those who choose to remain in a state of sickness rather than to endure the painful treatment, surgery, and discipline required for good health. The doctor may observe that a person, that he's found a dangerous growth on a person's body. He may urge that immediate surgery is necessary. But the person concludes that the radical nature of the remedy is too frightening and too painful to accept. He or she decides, I, I, I'm going to keep the tumor even though it may kill me because I'm afraid to go under the surgeon's knife. They would rather be sick than accept the remedy that will provide for their sickness. Therefore, Jesus was precisely right in saying to the man, I don't want to deprive you of something that you want to hold on to. It may be that you prefer the life that you're living. It may be that you enjoy being brought here day by day. It may be that you enjoy the friendships that you've developed with the other infirm folk that are lying around the pool. You may enjoy not being able to work. You may enjoy having an excuse for not being productive. And so before I do anything for you, let me ask you, I don't want to mess up your good thing. Do you want to be made well. Oh, look over at your neighbor and say, do you want to be made well? See, there are people who prefer physical sickness. But there are also people who prefer spiritual sickness. They feel that there are too many benefits that they would lose if they really became serious about their spiritual health. They feel that their life on earth would become too restricted and too austere if they really got down to business with their God. They feel that they would be deprived of too many of the joys of life if they really got down to business for God. Then there are others who don't want to bear are the responsibility of a vital spiritual life. They're afraid, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to really get down to business with God because if I get down to business with God, God may call me to preach. God may send me to Africa or, or send me to India somewhere to, to minister to the people there. And, and if I really surrender my life to God, God may tell me to do something that I don't want to do. And so I'm not going to surrender. I, I would rather be spiritually inferior than to reach the level that God would, would have me to reach. And then there are some who are caught between their desire to be spiritually healthy and their desire to hold on to something that is destructive to their spiritual well-being. And so they're holding on to the wrong thing here and, and reaching out to God and they're stressed in the middle. They want to be healthy. But there's a stronger desire to avoid the sacrifice and to enjoy some of the things that are not approved by God. Therefore, they would rather be sick. After all, after all, it's easy to, to operate at a level uh, of, of spiritual inferiority because so many other folk are doing so. And when you look at the crowd, so few people are really 
serious about their relationship with God. So few people are really reaching for God's highest and reaching for God's best. And there's a tendency on the part of many to lower their spiritual aspirations and to accept less than the best. But you know there are certain areas in life where we should not settle for anything that's less than the best that we can do. Oh, say that after me. There are certain areas in life where we should not accept anything less than the best that we can do. Is there anybody in here who just made up your mind that you want to be the best that you can be, that you want to do the best, that you can do the most, that you can do, that you want to reach the highest and best that you can in every possible area of your life? Help me, Holy Ghost. In Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 14, we find a very shocking statement. The scripture says, they have also healed the hurt of my people slightly by saying peace, peace when there is no peace. The people had a critical, severe injury. They had a severe spiritual disease. Jeremiah proclaimed that they had assumed that their disease had been cured and that the treatment had been successful when in reality they had only been slightly healed. Slightly healed. The spiritual physicians proclaimed peace, peace, everything is all right, when in reality they were headed for disaster. Maybe the physicians caused the skin to grow over the wound rather than getting to the heart of the wound and removing the infection and allowing it to heal from the inside out. It may be that these physicians told the patient it's just a minor thing. Don't worry about it when in reality it was a very deadly thing. They may have given the patient sugar pills and placebos telling him you're going to be all right when the disease was running its course all the way to death. Have you ever observed the course of a fatal illness? Have you ever observed a loved one sicken and die? Initially, there may have been no outward symptom. The condition may have been discovered only by an x-ray or by an exam. But after quite a while, it may have been noticed that the individual began to experience a loss of appetite and a loss of weight. As time went on, more sleep was required, while increased muscle weakness and energy loss was more and more apparent. Various kinds of discomfort and pain started to afflict the individual's body and their emotions and their mind and more and more care from others was necessary to the point that the individual was hardly able to do anything for himself or for herself. Increasingly during their illness, hospitalization was necessary and gradually the sparkle left their eyes. The color left their skin. Their face became gaunt and unrecognizable. Finally, it was just a matter of time. And then they were gone. That was the course of a physical disease. But have you ever observed the course of a spiritual disease? Have you ever seen somebody make a good start? Have you ever seen them last for a number of years? But somewhere along the way, something went wrong. The individual was distracted from the things of God and attracted to that which was contrary to the will of God. 
And rather than intensifying prayer and intensifying the pursuit of God, these ungodly enticements were entertained to the degree that they took up residence in the mind of the individual. And as these ungodly enticements became more and more powerful, thoughts of God became more and more weak. And rather than forcing the spirit to feed on the things of God, the flesh begins to feed on ungodly thoughts. And the spirit of the man grows weaker and weaker. The man you feed is the man that's going to grow. If you feed the man of the flesh, he will grow and become powerful. If you feed the spirit man, the spirit man will grow and become powerful. You cannot move toward God and away from God at the same time. For a while, the individual continues to show up for worship. But even gradually, worship attendance decreases. And even if worship attendance does not decrease, the joy of the worship becomes less and less. Have you seen anybody that went to church and nothing that went on in church pleased them? They didn't enjoy the way the ushers ushered. They didn't enjoy the way the deacons deek. They didn't enjoy the way the preacher preached. They didn't enjoy the way the choir sang. Everything that was going on, they found it to be unpleasant. Hallelujah. When you're in this condition, prayer and the study of the word, begins to decrease. Somewhere along the way, this slightly healed person, oh, look at your neighbor and say, don't be slightly healed. Somewhere along the way, this slightly healed person begins to speak peace, peace to himself or herself. And when you say peace to yourself, you're making a false assumption. They say peace, peace by saying God is merciful. And God is going to let me by. Oh yes, God is merciful. But God is also just. And God said my spirit will not always strive with man. And he that being often reproved shall be suddenly destroyed. And that without remedy. The Bible says God is not slack concerning the promise as some count slackness. But God is long suffering toward us, not willing that anybody ought to perish. But they say peace, peace by saying God is merciful. But then they also say peace, peace by saying I'm no worse than brother or sister so-and-so is. And if they're going to heaven, I'm going to heaven too. Well, I just came by to tell you they're not going to heaven. Hallelujah. Don't look at other people to find out where you ought to be in God. Jesus is our perfect example. And therefore you ought to follow Jesus. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Somebody else says, peace, peace. I know I'm not what I ought to be today, but someday I will repent. You may not live to see someday. Now is the time of salvation. And today is your salvation much nearer than when you believe. Well, they say peace, peace to themselves. 
by saying maybe the Bible is wrong about hell. And I would respond by saying maybe the Bible is right about hell. And I'd rather believe in hell and be wrong than not believe in hell and find out that there was a hell that I had to go to. Some say peace, peace to themselves by saying I have a good reputation and people feel like I'm living a pretty good life. Well, God doesn't look at your reputation. Men look on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. As two people, how's your heart? In the eyes of God. One more person says, peace, peace. I believe in Jesus. Isn't that enough? Well, the Bible says the devils also believe, but they are not saved. You got to have a relationship with God. You've got to have a walk with God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. And I just came by to tell you tonight why leap up from the operating table when the operation is only halfway over. Why leave the doctor's office before you've even seen the doctor? And why be slightly healed when you can be healed all together? Is there anybody in the house of God tonight that wants to walk in spiritual hell? I wonder is there anybody in the house tonight that wants to be all that God would have you to be. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I want to be all, everything that God can make me to be. How do you get healed? You get healed through repentance, godly sorrow, turning away from sin. And the Lord said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. If you want to be healed, there has to be a turning. There has to be a godly sorrow. Lord, I'm sorry. I know I haven't done what you told me to do. But Lord, if you forgive me and give me another chance, I'll obey your word. I'll do your will. Healing takes place through believing in Christ Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him and the Greek word is really into him believing in him so strongly that you put your life in his hands healing takes place through self-denial for Jesus said if any man would be my disciple let him deny himself take up the cross and follow me daily healing takes place when you make up your mind God I want to live holy and I want to live righteously before you for the Bible says follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord healing takes place when you walk in the power of the Holy Ghost the baptism of the Holy Ghost 
is not something that you experience once and for all. But every day, you need to be filled again. Every day, you need a new endowment of the power of God. For you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And I don't know about you, but I received the Holy Ghost in 1956. But every day, I come back to God and say, Lord, fill me again. Do me again. Do me like you did me when you first baptized me. Raise your hand and say, Lord, do me again. Oh, Lord, fill me again. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Healing, I said healing, takes place through the study of the word of God and believing the word of God. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. I am not what you say I am, but I am what the Bible says I am. I've got not what you say I've got. I've got what the Bible says I've got. I can do not what you say I can do, but I can do what the Bible says I can do. And the Bible says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Healing takes place through prayer and fasting and consecration. Healing takes place when you decide I'm going to get in the press. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm going to get in the press. You can't stumble into the kingdom. You can't wander into the kingdom. If you go in the kingdom, you've got to make up your mind. The apostle Paul said, I haven't got it made. I'm not perfect, but I press that I may lay hold of that which Christ has laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't feel like I got it made, but this one thing, this one thing, this one thing I do, forgetting what's behind me and reaching to those things that are before, forgetting what's in my past, forgetting past accomplishments, forgetting past attainments, reaching toward the future. Our presiding bishop have given us a theme, celebrating a glorious past, embracing a promising future. You don't embrace your past. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't embrace your past. You celebrate it. You thank God for it. You look and see how far the Lord has brought you from, but you don't embrace your past. You celebrate your past, but you reach and you embrace a promising future. And child of God, I see you in the future and you look much better than you look right now. Yes, tell your neighbor, I see you in the future and you look much better than you look right now. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, praise God about my future. Tell him, neighbor, I'm excited about my future. Come on and praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let us not be weary. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not healing takes place when you put God first first in your mind first in your heart first in your priorities seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness 
and all of these things shall be added all things work together for good to them that love God who are the called according to the purpose of God Lord I want to do your will Lord I want to walk in your way Lord I want to bring praise to your name if you put God first God will put you first if you put God first God will take you higher higher than you've ever been in all of your life I've got to close but we've got to remember that Jesus said to the man who'd been sick for 38 years do you want to be well do you want to be well I don't want to mess up your good thing you may enjoy this the man began to make excuses and he said every time I try to get in the water somebody gets in my way somebody steps in before me but I just came by to tell you child of God don't look at what other folk are doing don't look at what other folk are saying don't look at what other folk think about you don't look at how other people try to hold you back or try to push you forward if God is for you he's more than all the world against you grab your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor if God said it's your time nobody can hold you back nobody can hold you down hallelujah when Jesus shows up I said when Jesus shows up all excuses are invalid when Jesus shows up all of the rules are transcended when Jesus shows up miracles show up when Jesus shows up healing shows up when Jesus shows up everything you need shows up tell your neighbor neighbor Jesus has shown up healing has shown up deliverance has shown up your miracle has shown up everything you need is shown up come on and praise him because your blessing is in the room right now tell your neighbor neighbor your blessing is in the room right now it's here right now it's here right now it's in the room right now yes finally the man stopped making excuses closed his mouth he'd run out of words to say but in his heart he was saying Lord I'm tired I'm tired of being left here every day I'm tired of being a liability I'm tired of being down and out I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired Lord I'm tired there's some tired folk in the room today there's some folk who are fed up who've had enough I'm tired of dope I'm tired of alcohol I'm tired of weakness I'm tired of failure I'm tired of backsliding I'm tired of fighting this battle all by myself I'm, I'm tired of being spiritually inferior I'm tired of not being where I want to be in God I'm tired of being where I am I want to go higher Lord oh Lord if you can do anything for me hallelujah take me higher lift me up turn my life around Lord hallelujah I'm tired Jesus looked at the man and said get up pick up your bed and began to walk and immediately the man was made well picked up his bed and began to walk I've got a word for somebody tonight God's gonna bless you 
so that the stuff has been carrying you, you will begin to carry it. I said, God is going to bless you to the degree that the folk you've had to lean on, the stuff you've had to rely on, God's going to make you so strong that you began to pick it up. You began to pick them up and carry them. Somebody ought to praise God. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just came by to tell you that you may have been knocked down, but by the power of God, it's time to get up. You might have been knocked down by childhood sexual abuse. You may have been knocked down by church politics. You might have been knocked down by the lies that somebody told on you. But in the name of Jesus, rise up, rise up. Grab your neighbor by the hand, lift that hand, and say, rise up. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. You're not going to stumble. You're not going to wonder. He that hath the God, I said, he that hath the God, a good work in you shall perform it to the day of the Lord Jesus. If God started you off, God's going to finish. Tell your neighbor, if God started you, God's going to finish it. He's going to finish it. He's going to finish it. Yes. Yes. The word of God said, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall, they shall be filled. Raise your hand and say, I shall be filled. I shall be filled. I'm going to have everything I need, everything God can give me. I'm going to have it. Oh, yes, I am. The Bible says that is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And I just came by to tell you, God is at work in your life. God is not through with you yet. God is going to take you higher than you've ever been. The word of the Lord said the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, make you perfect. God is at work. God is bringing you out. God is lifting you higher. Stand up and praise him. Stand up and praise him. Glory. 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 Come on and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Simon Peter. Simon Peter was locked in jail. Chains on his wrist. Chains around his legs. Soldiers were all around him to keep him captive. But way over in the midnight, the angel showed up in that jailhouse and said, Simon Peter, get up. Rise, stand on your feet. Simon could well have said, if you get these chains off my wrist, if you take these chains off my legs, I'll get up. But as long as I've got these chains on my wrist, I'm not going to get up. But no, no, no. He didn't say that. He just got up. And when he got up, the chains fell off. I just came by to tell you, when you got up, the chains fell off. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you're free, you're delivered. God has done it. Tell your neighbor, 
When you got up, the chain fell off. Come on, shake yourself. God has done it. God has set you free. Come on, walk away from where you are. Get out of your place. Take a walk with God. Walk a few steps. Get away from where you are. You've left where you were. You're on your way to where God will have you to be. Get up by the power of God. Get up in the name of Jesus. Go higher, 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 higher. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm upward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher, higher, higher. Raise your hand and say higher. Higher, higher. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you look for me next year, look up because I'm going higher. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nobody stands still, nobody's walking, nobody turns your back toward the altar. Turn your face toward the altar. No one turn your back toward the altar. The preacher has preached the word of God tonight and told us that the Lord is taking us higher. Continue in the mode of worship just for a moment. The streets are too dangerous. The day is too dark. Evil is too potent for us to be careless. Don't sit down to eat and rise up to play. Turn your face to the altar just for a moment. Let's talk to God for ourselves. This is each one of our times to tell God yes. The word came to us. The word is food for our souls. It's nourishment for our spiritual man. There's something in this house for you to take home and take to your rooms and take to your resting places. Every eye is closed. Every head is bowed. Every heart is looking up. If there is one who does not know the Lord, if there's one who can't feel what we feel, who does not know what we know, turn your heart to the Lord right now. You don't even have to come forward. The Lord is where you are. Bow your heads and let's pray, let's pray. No walking, no walking. Let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray, let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the spirit that is life unto our very souls. We thank you for this God man whose heart has been lifted up and who has preached to us the word of truth. And just like the man who was lame for 38 years, there's a lameness in our lives. There's a healing that is needed by each of us. Please, Lord, heal us. Please, Lord, pick us up. Some of us have been pulled down. 
Some have been knocked down. Some have been dragged down. Some have just laid down. But please, Lord, lift us up and let us rise again. Rise in your power, in your spirit, in your might, in the fervence of your anointing. Bless this church. Bless our leader. Continue your ministry in Bishop Patterson's life. Touch every fiber of his being. Heal every tissue and every nerve. Bring him to full deliverance. Give the church this miracle. It is the miracle that we wait for, that we pray for, that we believe in, that we trust in, and that we lean on. Every hand lifted, every hand lifted. Every hand, every hand lifted up. Every hand lifted up, 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 up. Father, there's no other way to lift our hands up, but up, but up where you are. Bless these hands, bless these hands all over this house. Bless these hands. Give us hands to do, give us ears to hear, and hearts to receive is our prayer in Jesus' name. And everybody in this house, tell the Lord, yes. Thank you. And amen. Everybody standing, everybody standing. We give God praise for the message and the messenger. The prayer of faith has been offered. We, God bless Bishop Blake. After hearing the powerful, life-changing message, all the people should join in the benediction. Let's sing together. And everybody said amen. 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 Let everybody sing. Amen. Thank you for watching the Jonathan Desvernay Gospel Channel. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Lift Him up. Lift Him up. Lift Him up. Come on.